We have an excellent power panel for you guys. But before we go to that, actually, I just want to make one quick note. Katrina on Twitter wrote in about the last segment about Finland's education system. She made a point that many people make. They said, well, it's easy for Finland because they have a homogeneous society. One, I don't think that, that makes much of a difference logically. But number two, we don't have to worry about that because we actually have the perfect example. Right next to them is Norway, same exact kind of population. They developed the privatized and competition model that we have for our education system. Disastrous. They're near the bottom. Finland near the top, Norway near the bottom. Why? Two different systems. So I just wanted everybody to be clear on that. Now, let me bring on my excellent panelists. David Pakman is a radio and television host, nationally syndicated radio and TV program, The David Pakman Show. Furthermore, Lenny McAllister is a, a conservative who writes for uh, newspapers and websites, including AOL and The Root Magazine. It's great to have both of you guys here. Uh, I want to start with the issue of can the GOP make a case for Latinos? I'm going to wish them good luck on that. Right now, uh, they're getting hammered. Obama, 61. Mitt Romney, 27 in the latest NBC News Telemundo poll. So not working out so far. And then uh, there's a new uh, super PAC that is uh, pa called PAC Plus. It's a pro-Latino super PAC. And they're running this ad against Mitt Romney in Arizona. Let's watch. Great businessman, good guy. I invite you publicly uh, endorse uh, Mitt Romney. You can focus on the very poor. It's not my focus. That's a pretty powerful ad. Right now, before the ad started running, uh, Romney has a 50 to 43 lead in Arizona. We'll see how that turns out, obviously. Let me, let me start with you here. Uh, you know, it's tough for, uh, it appears, for Republicans to make a case that, hey, we're really pro-Latino, given how the harsh rhetoric that's been out there on immigration. Uh, what's your thoughts on how they can combat that? Well, they're going to have to move away from looking at illegal immigration and the inhumane ways that they're dealing with the immigration issue and focus on the economy and education when it comes to Latino vo voters. If they could stay in pocket with that, they can show how perhaps how these tax cuts, how a better economy can help Latino innovators get back into the workforce and move forward from there. They can also focus on how educational reform from the states down and not necessarily from the top down can help make a difference with these Latino families as they grow and as they try to get their kids a better way of life. If they're focused on illegal immigration and the inhumane ways of dealing with the illegal immigration, they're going to stay stuck in this rut and this is going to be a clear advantage for President Obama in the fall. I agree with that. David, you know, is, can, can there be a case made, hey, we're going to bring more jobs to Latinos, the education system we're advocating is better, although we just showed in the last segment that it's not. But anyway, can they appeal to Latinos in that way? Yeah, well, the point Lenny is making about jobs would work if there was actually a believable plan jobs, if the, the job creation wasn't based on lower taxes for the rich and Mitt Romney's so-called credentials at Bain Capital. So, you know, uh, Spanish is my first language. I'm from Argentina. The only group of, uh, of Latino voters that is even remotely going to consider a Republican candidate is Cubans. That, that will be a factor in Florida. But otherwise, I don't think they've got a shot here at all, Cenk. All right. I, I want to move on to the second topic here, which is, is Nancy Pelosi too conservative? Okay. Now, it, it seems like a funny uh, thing to say, but in, in reality, she's just uh, proposed legislation saying to make the tax cuts permanent for everybody making under a million dollars. It's a bit of a political trick to try to catch Boehner. But, I mean, David, let me start with you on this one. I look at it and I go, my God, I don't want to do that. That's cost 43% of federal revenue is... Like, are people making $900,000 middle class all of a sudden? Yeah, well, it's unbelievable because you could make under under that proposal $975,000 a year. It's about 23 times the average per capita income in the U.S., and you would be getting a significant tax cut. Now, that's not going to be stimulative tax cuts, right? If you make 23 times the average per capita, you're not going to buy 23 times as much food unless you're, you know, a couple of our Republican uh, politicians. You're not going to buy 23 times as many houses. It's not stimulative spending. It's not a good idea. Lenny, I feel that the political spectrum has moved so far to the right. I can't believe we've got Nancy Pelosi now making an argument that we should have permanent tax cuts for people making $999,000 a year. So, I mean, am I seeing this wrong or, or is the spectrum moved to the right? 
Well, I don't know if she's necessarily moving to the right. This is something that may be constituency driven. Remember, she went out of her way to get the exceptions for Obamacare as well. So maybe this is constituency driven. However, in 2012, in an election year, the presidency's on the line. This is something where both sides, unfortunately, are playing politics, including with proposed legislation, to try to trap the other into sound bites that can be used in the election season. I don't know if this is necessarily a real strategy or something that could be used for fodder once we get to the conventions moving forward. So it's something that we probably have to pull back Lenny, from, look at, and wait and see how this goes. All right, Lenny, you're absolutely right that there's politics involved here, and she's trying to get Boehner to vote against mid middle class tax cuts, et cetera. But real quick, I got to ask you one last question. Look, if we do all the Bush tax cuts, extend them again, just for the top bracket, it costs us $850 billion. How could you do all those tax cuts and then argue that you're for deficit reduction? It's kind of hard to do unless if you could show a way where those tax cuts will go back into the economy and create jobs and improve the situations we've been dealing with for the last several years. If you can't do that, then it is a lot about tax cuts for the rich. We have to yeah, show that, how that, this can be reinvested, repatriated, and moved forward from here. And you know that that can't be done, Jenk, right? Because as we've right. seen very clearly, you need to create demand for, that to, for, for those jobs to be created. And giving tax cuts to the rich creates no demand. Right, and I know we tried it for 10 years, and we lost about a million jobs, so it didn't really work the last time around. All right, Lenny and David, you guys are great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Jake. God bless. Thanks. All right, you too. And now as we are...